Uh, this video is about cracking the vehicle code. In my opinion, it is a masterpiece of deceptive generic terminology. Now look at this picture and tell me what's wrong with it. If you really need a license plate for a non-commercial vehicle, just used for traveling as an operator, then you would not be allowed to attach it. You would need an authorized agent to attach this license plate. Now think for a moment, uh, are you allowed to attach the VIN plate? Are you allowed to attach the inspection and admission sticker on the vehicle? No, only an authorized agent is allowed to attach those items. In fact, in Title 18 of U.S. Code, Section 511, tampering with uh, what you understand as the uh, VIN plate, that's up to like... Uh, five years in prison. Now I want to uh, look at the word certificate. We'll start there. It says, uh, this is from Black's Law. It's a written assurance or official representation that some act has or has not been done or some event occurred, or some legal formality has been complied with. Well, when you're applying for a title, that's when you're surrendering the certificate of origin. You are surrendering the property transfer receipt. You are forfeiting ownership of the vehicle. Now, the phrase certificate of title meant something different say back in 1902 because for back then it was the car dealer that issued you a certificate of title and a certificate of title had a companion known as what you would call the sales receipt because the sales receipt bore, bore evidence that you had a valid certificate of title the sales receipt uh, bore evidence that the dealer received the money, and back then it was hard currency, and then to reciprocate, after the dealer received the money, then he was allowed to issue the certificate of title, which was the property transfer receipt. So the certificate of title back in 1902 is when the property was transferred from the dealer's name to your name and then you had the sales receipt to prove that you paid the money to have it done but after 1919 when the federal government got involved with the main uh, law the National Motor Vehicle Theft Act of 1919 that changed the ball game the federal government made it illegal for you to own a vehicle as private property so one aspect of a certificate of title was to act as a coupon voucher to protect your equity investment. But you never received that document. Uh, like the word apply, to make a formal request. Well, the word apply, or to make application, that is, under the circumstances, that is grossly defective and, and is deceiving. If there was a draft and you were drafted into the army, are you a, can you call when you're uh, required to fill your name out on a paper? You're not applying to be a soldier. You have to register to be a soldier. So the word apply means to be voluntary. It's a voluntary act. Applying for a title is not a voluntary act because if you did not register the vehicle, then it could be confiscated and then you could be fined or imprisoned. Prior to 1919 when the uh, registration was at the county level, the profanitary, you'd have to take your paperwork up to the profanitary and then he would um, record all the information 
And to be technical, you were getting the certificate of title registered, the one you got from the car dealer. And then he issued you a certificate of registration. That's what it was called, a certificate of registration. Well, the actual name for this document that Buffonetary was given back then should have been called the certificate of title registration. And then about five years before 1919, that's when they changed, the, the, that's when the Commonwealth changed the name. And then it went to a certificate of title. And then after 1919, when the federal government got involved, that's when it was called the official certificate of title. Because if you bought a car, say, in 1917 or 1918, and you were issued this uh, certificate of registration. After 1919, there was a recall. You had to surrender the documents issued by the, by the state and then get your federal document. Because after 1919, the state became a trustee of federal property. A title is a federal document issued through the trustee because it's under federal mandate that it was done this way. Let's take a look at a title. So what can be gleaned from a title? Well, what's circled in red, it says registered owner, then it says lawful owner, and then it has tenant. The blue star says the word owner. So now we have a registered owner, a lawful owner, a tenant, and an owner. Well, see, this is the adulteration of language. Take the word liberty. On the one hand, the word liberty means a privilege. And on the other hand, it means a right. Freedom. This is the adulteration of language. See, in legal land, you words are tricky. Because on the top of a page, a word, one word can mean a pink cow. And the same word at the bottom of the page or the next page can mean a purple horse. And this is the how the lawyers, the politicians, use deceptive generic terminology to commit fraud. I mean, what started this for me was four years ago. I was looking through the vehicle code and there was no definition for a certificate of title in Section 102. And I thought that was strange. You figure a title was an important document. It should have something listed. So then I spent a ton of hours down at the State Law Library in Harrisburg getting copies. I got copies of the vehicle code going all the way back to 1902 to see how it evolved and how things were changed. Uh, just recently I went up to Troop R in Dunmore, the State Police Barracks. I walk in. And I asked the, the trooper, I says, I need a definition for a certificate of title. He says, all oh, that proves ownership. I says, well, uh, I need something in writing to that effect. He gets this big blue book, it's about four inches thick. He's looking, at, he's looking at it for about five minutes, and he couldn't find anything. Then he's telling me, I says, well, I'm going to have to go to Pet down in Harrisburg, see PennDOT. That amazes me, that even the police don't even have a written definition promulgated by government to explain what a title is. We just assume it means ownership. Now, Title 75 is not um, a standalone document or section of law because we have uh, Chapter 23. We have the, the PA Code 67. This is, uh, I guess, Chapter 23 talks about delivery of certificates of title. And where that red arrow is, you'll see the word owner. Doesn't say registered owner, doesn't say lawful owner. Just says owner. That's deceptive. Because you're not the owner. That's trickery. Now here are some definitions from section 102 of the vehicle code. Owner. It says a person other than a lien holder having the property right, bingo, property right. That's what tenants have, a property right 
in or title to a vehicle. Okay, so you have a title to a vehicle, but what is a vehicle? Well, Section 102 of the Vehicle Code has two definitions, one for vehicle and one for a motor vehicle. Let's look at motor vehicle first. A motor vehicle is defined as a vehicle which is self-propelled. Oh, that says a lot. And then you go to the word vehicle. It says every device in or upon or by which any person or property is or may be transported. I'm going to stop right there because it, then it says the or word or drawn upon a highway. So every device, that would include a shopping bag filled with groceries if you're carrying them down a the street. Because that is a shopping bag is, is a, would fall into the category of every. See, this is all deceptive, generic terminology. They don't even give you an accurate description of a vehicle concerning function. But they don't tell you what a vehicle is. Especially they stay away from the word property other than it carries property, but they don't say that it is property. And if it is property, who owns it? See, uh, the word owner, uh, after 1919, that's like, that's like an archaic term. Uh, the term, the phrase registered owner is not in the vehicle code. Just this archaic term, owner. I mean, after 1919, the only one that owns the vehicle is Uncle Sam. Because he is in possession of the certificate of origin, the property transfer receipt, which you gave away. I mean, when you go back to a title, you got to look at what's not on, on there. It doesn't, it doesn't say property, it doesn't say property transfer. There's nothing there about the equity, how much the vehicle was worth. Uh, this title here, well, after you surrender a certificate of origin, there's two titles that are issued. The one you never see, that's the original. You just get a copy. Because the original certificate of title, that pertains to the vehicle's equity. Like I said, you never see that document. The one you get is pertains to the liability. And in another video I made, liability is treated as a as a commodity as a commodity that has its own intrinsic value. That's um, that's assigned out of thin air, and has nothing to do with the money or the equity in the vehicle itself. When you so when you buy a vehicle, when it's all said and done, the only thing you own is that piece of paper. That's a liability license that you can buy, sell, or trade. You can never buy, sell, or trade. A vehicle a car an automobile because you can't sell someone else's property because it belongs to Uncle Sam because you agreed to it by implied consent now on this document it says in that green triangle I have application for title like I said the word application that implies your voluntary decision but it's not. It's mandatory. It's like it's mandatory that you register for the draft. It's time we have to look at these documents in a more critical way. Uh, because the way it's worded now it's called the fraudulent conveyance of language. The vehicle code at best is written in sixth grade, sixth grade reading level. It's actually a set of alternative regulations based on the applicant's waiver of the federal regulations. What does that mean? One example is a union contract. Two agreements are made when the final draft of a contract is accepted. As an agreement is reached as to what the contract will contain, at the same time another agreement is reached as to what the contract will not contain, as if an agreement on what to admit. What is omitted does not become part of the contract directly, nor by having them listed in the footnotes. This type of censoring, omitting what was rejected in the contract, or waived, 
is exploited since those who join the union afterwards have no idea what points of interest they almost had or waived when the contract was ratified. I mention a contract because the so-called registration card is evidence of a unilateral contract as further evidence that by your signature you agreed to waive the federal benefits and agreed to be under maritime admiralty law. Now getting back to the vehicle code, when an, when an applicant waives the benefits of the federal trust agreement, all the regulations pertaining to the trust agreement were deleted by the implied consent of the applicant since they became moot, or saying in another way, had, they have no relevance because you waived them. Uh, by 1936, the trust fraud was so successful, the language used in the vehicle code reflected the predetermined result that all applicants would comply without question and waive the federal benefits. After all, how can, you, how can an applicant lay claim to benefits when all effort was made to conceal them? Uh, if you compare contract law, any acts of trust fraud can be repudiated. Uh, the process of making an application is the process of waiving a pre-existing claim, benefit, or right. When you applied for a driver's license, for example, did you ever think of writing a letter to the Department of Transportation asking why? By what determination was decreed? Talking about that driver's license, that's going to be a separate video. Well, now here's one section from Title 75 of the Vehicle Code, uh, Section 1301. Now, this is the parts that are not highlighted or as they are written in the Vehicle Code. The parts that are highlighted is the same section, but I reworded it. The first thing they say, registration and certificate of title required. That's backwards. The timeline's back. You first have to get a certificate of title, then you can get your vehicle so-called registered. But see, that is more deception because, if anything, it should be called a registration certificate of title because, because a certificate of title is the result of a registration process. When you surrender the certificate of origin and you are getting the VIN number, the federal hull plate number, registered to the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, in that section 1301 they say no person shall drive or move there more censorship they want to stay away from the word operate even though your license says driver on it you still can if you you can declare your status if you're not engaged in commerce if you're not a paid driver say working for UPS or if you uh, if, if you if you're hired uh, say for a plumber and you're dri driving a delivery truck your license is uh, valid for commercial use under 26,000 pounds but you could also just be an operator but they stay away from that word operator that's why the, the highlighted part I put down no person shall drive or operate and no registered owner but said so what took place in 1919 by you waiving the federal benefits it was like the trust they made the whole trust agreement disappear and they committed theft took all the documents proving your uh, ownership that you owned the vehicle and they continued the vehicle code that existed prior to 1919 as though the federal government never got involved concerning your relationship to the vehicle. So the next part of this vehicle, uh, this video rather, I want to also have a, one section concerning what happened at the beginning and then what the state was doing prior to 1919. I mean prior to 1919 the Commonwealth had direct jurisdiction over vehicles and it had its own vehicle code. But once the federal government got involved, the Commonwealth had to repeal its then existing vehicle code. It had to uh, 
uh, recall all its pre-existing documents. It wasn't going to recall like the license plate because they had an expiration date on them, and so this was uh, being done close to the expiration or expiration dates of the uh, license plates because back then all the license plates expired on the same day. Uh, they they didn't care about the uh, recalling the uh, the inspection stickers because they were going to expire. What they had to recall was the state issued certificates of title because then they had to confiscate them and then reissue what was then called the official certificate of title or the federal certificate of title. So this will be enough for now. We're up to uh, 20 minutes is usually my limit here.